Hello pilots and welcome back to Flying with Overkill F-18C Hornet for DCS World. This will be the start of our final segment for the F-18 which is air to air. Now um, we will be beginning with the um, AN APG-73 radar. Um, however, I want to preface something that if you if you are a person who simply knows that a radar is used to find uh, other air traffic, okay, um, this video you're not ready for. What I want you guys to do is please stop this video, check the description below, and there are three links to an F-15C um, radar tutorial that I did a while back. Um, it is a three-part series. Now, the biggest thing here is that it um, it goes very, very in-depth of how the radar does what it does. Um, it gives you an idea of if you could see the radar beam, what that would look like. And therefore, it shows you gaps in the radar as range increases and decreases, as altitude changes, as the aircraft change position, pitch, you know, etc. It's really, really important that you guys understand how a radar works in order to effectively use it. I can show you how all the buttons and switches in the radar here work all day long, and it's very possible that you may be, may be missing potential targets or bandits because you don't understand where its limitations are and what zones you may or may not be able to see a target. So if you are that person, if you are not extremely familiar about how a radar does what it does, please stop this, check the links in the description below, and then come back to this one. Okay? For everyone else, let's get started. Alright guys, so let's start just sort of working our way around the radar screen here. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is sort of break down the ranges and how it works real quick and then a couple of features on the radar that you'll need to know when using it. First thing, the radar has a maximum range of approximately 160 nautical miles. Now, you can see here this is the current range scale. Okay, currently the screen is displaying anything between us and 40 nautical miles out that is within inside the radar's uh, visibility. And again, if you don't understand what determines radar visibility, please watch the videos in the description below. However, um, for everyone else, <clears throat> um, it's important to understand that just because we're only seeing 40 miles of data does not mean the radar is stopping at 40 miles, okay? So no matter what number we have displayed here, the radar is still going all the way out to approximately 160 nautical miles, which means that any aircraft that's out there and within, within inside the radar detection range is getting lit up on their RWR down here, letting them know that we are out here using our radar. So it's important to understand that, that you are being seen by anyone who is in front of you on their RWR anytime the radar is active and potentially hitting their aircraft. And it could be hitting their aircraft and you not necessarily having it on your screen. So keep that in mind when using the radar. Because the radar, as cool as being able to see your opponents, they can also see you when you're using it. Okay, or at the very least they know that you're out here. Okay, so um, let's go to sort of work our way from top down here on what we're seeing here and then we'll sort of take around the block as necessary all right so the radar has a maximum azimuth of 140 degrees that's 70 degrees right 70 degrees to the left okay and then you have <clears throat> these indicators breaking down the scope and segments so you have 60 degrees 60 degrees 30 30 in your center line Coming up from the center line, you have your current course heading, okay? And then above that, you have this erase. And what the erase does is if your radar scope has a bunch of contacts on it, by pressing the erase button, it will literally wipe all the contacts off the screen and then start reporting contacts uh, starting from scratch, right? And so this is handy if there's a lot going on in the area. You have, you know, multiple aircraft, constantly changing altitude and direction. You know, maybe there's a combat scenario happening. Okay, and there's just a constant change in aspect and uh, target information. It's good to periodically hit the erase and make sure that you're getting the most up-to-date and accurate information. All right, now coming over here to the next one, we have the sill or silence is what it is. And as you can see when I press it, it stops the radar, puts it into standby. So remember I was telling you that anytime the radar is active and if the... Uh, opponent's aircraft is in the correct position or, or correct scenario I should say to detect our radar we're appearing on the RWR by pressing the silence button we're no longer 
appearing on the RWR. The radar is stopped. So I'll give you an example of where this could be handy is if you're getting in close to a bandit and you're trying to sort of sneak up on him, if you will, okay, you can use the silence to stop the radar. And then what you can do is hit this active button. And what it will do is tell the radar to complete one full sweep. And then it will stop at whatever position you silenced it at. So you see a bandit, you want to get closer to him, you silence the radar. Okay, you fly for you know a minute or two. You want to get an updated update of where he is, right? You tap that again. Boom, he pops up. You get the new information. Radar stops. You go quiet again. Sneak in a little further. Okay, so that's just one advantage or one scenario where you might use that. There's a bunch of different scenarios, but that's just one that comes to mind. Then next we have the bars, and bars are a little weird to um, explain, so I'm going to do my best here. So for that, let's go back looking out the window here. Um, now, everything I'm about to tell you has no relationship to the HUD, has no relationship to the cockpit, okay? I'm just giving you guys a visual of what's going on outside. Bars indicate the vertical scan um, thoroughness, if you will, okay, how thorough the vertical scan is. So for example, you can see here we're in one bar. That means the radar is going to go one, okay? from its top of its scan range to the bottom of its scan range. It's going to go over once, and then the next pass is going to go all the way down to the bottom. Now what that could potentially do is, especially at the further ranges, is it leaves a lot of open sky that potentially didn't get scanned by your radar, and contacts could be out there. You could have fighters out there that you know are coming in and could be overlooked by the radar in that situation. So you have one bar, two bar, four bar and six bar. So let's talk about one and six and because you guys can sort of extrapolate what two and four is at this point. A six bar is going to be a much more thorough scan. It's going to go one, two, three, four, five, and six, and then it's going to come back up. One, two, three, four, five, six. You guys got the gist. Okay, now pros and cons to these. <clears throat> a one bar, okay, where it just goes one, is going to be a very fast scan, okay, you're going to get back and forth action very, very quickly, where a six bar, you're going to get more detailed information, a much more thorough scan, but it's going to take much longer for that information to get back to you on the screen, okay, when you're sitting here having to do this, right, it's going to take a second, it's, you know, the, until the radar gets down to the lower range, you're not going to see a bandit at that lower altitude until the radar gets there. So the longer it takes for the radar to make it sweep down there, the, the closer that bandit gets to you, okay? So those are the pros and cons of the bars. Now, when would you use each? You might use a six bar if you're sort of just running cap in an area, you're running a combat air patrol, okay? You don't really have any known threats that are in the area. You're just patrolling as a just-in-case kind of thing. Then I would probably run six bar, you know, do full scans, make sure I'm getting detailed information in the skies. But as we start identifying targets, okay, there's these guys over here that, you know, potentially are going to be a problem. Then I'll start bringing the bars down, start focusing my radar over there while continuing to scan everywhere else. But I'm going to set up my scan range and altitude and the elevation of the radar to make sure that I'm paying attention to these guys specifically while still monitoring everything that's going on as best as I can. Okay, so as your priority increases, you'll decrease the radar bars and start focusing the radar emitter at a specific area that you're looking for. And I'll show you how to do that in a later tutorial. Okay, so that's bars and hand basket. I hope that makes sense to you guys. Let's go ahead and keep moving on. So then coming over to the next section here, okay, we have the operation mode, all right? So currently you can see it says operate. Now where this corresponds to is if I unpause our camera, you can see the radar control button here, okay? So off is obviously turns the radar off and then you have standby and you can see that it stops the radar. So it basically does the same thing that silence does and puts the radar into a standby mode. Okay, so put it back to operate, and you can see the operate mode. Now the silence up here doesn't change it. Okay, the radar is still oper in, in its operation mode. It's just silenced by us manually. Okay, so that's why you don't see that change when we're up here. So let's go ahead and keep moving. Then here we have range while search. Your basically your, your search mode, and you can s select uh, TWS track while scan. Um, by simply pressing the OSB next to these two. Okay, now when you go into track wall scan, you can see that the azimuth search has changed, and we'll talk about that in a later series. But to change that back, all we would do is come down here and adjust our azimuth search. So we'll put that back to 140 degrees. 
Okay, then the next one, now uh, available to us, go ED for this one, is you can see that it says surf for surface. So if we were to click that, we get our air to ground radar. Okay, and then if we want to go back to air, we simply select air. Okay. Um, the priority radar, I'm not sure what this OSB does. I can't see any functionality out of the OSB next to it. doesn't do anything yet. So this may be a feature that's coming and not yet implemented, but right now I don't have any more information on that. And then down here we have our PRF, or pulse repetition frequency. What this is, is this determines at what frequency the radar is going to do a scan at. Okay, and you have high, you have interleave, okay, which will switch between the two, and then you have medium. Now, real quick, um, just a couple examples, but you know, as you practice more and more, you'll get a better understanding of when to use what. But medium is going to be ideal for um, targets that are flanking you, right? So they're turning their their wings to you, right? Um, you're, you're getting that side profile, um, or targets that are turning cold but are still relatively close to you. You would want the medium um, frequency. Um, it's basically think of it as a sort of a slower frequency if you were to put it into a, a high level layman's terms um, <clears throat> sort of takes its time looking at things so it can see things that are a little bit smaller weirder angles have a smaller radar signature um, targets that are turning away from you again um, as their distance increases obviously the radar you know remember the radar you gotta think of the radar as chasing it right um, and then you have your high your high is going to be great for targets that are coming at you especially at high speeds um, lower altitudes, things like that, um, that's when the uh, high frequency comes into play there. And again, we'll go over that later on. Um, the mode button down here, I have not been able to find any use for it. It doesn't seem to do anything that I'm aware of yet. Again, as you saw, this our azimuth scan allows us to narrow the field. And again, it's something that you're going to use when um, you start narrowing down targets. And here's what's uh, um, nice about that is with your TDC, which is what this is here, and at the top of the TDC you have its current highest altitude and lowest altitude that it can see at this distance. Okay, so we have a maximum scan range currently that we're seeing on the screen. Remember, it's all about what we're seeing, not its total distance, but for the display uh, range of 40 nautical miles, what it's telling us here is at 26.2 nautical miles, we can see anything that's between 58,000 and 3,000 feet. Now, there are parameters still and certain scenarios where you may not be able to see a bandit even if they're within inside this window. Okay. Um, and then down here you also get the bearing, uh, which is 339 degrees from the aircraft is what it's telling us. And you can see it moves left to right. Um, or moves as you move the cursor left to right. Then over here on the left-hand side, this little carrot you can see going by, you can see goes with the six bars. So if you count it, one, two, three, four, five, six, back up, and it goes in line with your bars. One, two, and you guys can see the elevation changes. So it makes very, very fast jumps, just like I was showing you up, up on the uh, when we were looking out the window there. This corresponds with that. So something that you can do is you can control this elevation with our elevation controls, which we'll go over in just a minute. Okay, but we can move this up and down, and watch as we move this down our altitude distances changes so because we have the radar cone pointed so far down right now we can only see at a maximum of 6,000 feet and negative 15,000 feet well obviously there isn't going to be an airplane below you know the ground so that's kind of pointless depending on the scenario you would only point it down like that is if you knew there was one bandit you know hiding down low and you need to be able to see him all right so let's go ahead and bring that back up for now um, and then you have a current run timer, okay? Oops, didn't mean to hit that. We have the channel that the uh, radar is using, the data page, which we'll go over at a later time. As you can see, there's a couple different options that pop up. Um, we have the um, non-cooperative target recognition. Um, we'll go over that later time as well, and a reset. And here's how we change our uh, display range, okay? I don't like to call it a scan range, but as a display range. It's important that you guys keep that really strong in your mind. It's only a display range, not the scan range. And you can go all the way out to 160 and you can see that your altitudes are going to be much more significant as you get the further out you go. Okay, and that's because the radar is a cone, right? So starting from the center or right at the nose of the aircraft, you can see that we can only see about 
you know, 2,000 feet if you want to get really in tight. There you go. That was 1,000 feet. We can see between 29 and 30,000 feet. But as we start expanding it, that's when we get to see more and more and more. Okay? So I hope that makes sense on how all that works. All right. Let's see here. Is there anything else I wanted to cover today? Um, down here, we have our aircraft's currently indicated airspeed. So we're at 283 knots indicated at a Mach of 0.77. And we have our aircraft's uh, current altitude, so we're at 29,470 feet. And if we unlock our camera, we can verify the same information here on the HUD. All right, so this is going to be part one of what will hopefully only be two parts to the radar, but most likely three. Um, the Hornet has some pretty significant functionality in it uh, for the radar. It can do quite a lot. Um, so... Uh, Stay tuned, guys, for the next one. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you guys have any questions and comments, as always, leave them in the field below. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Take care.